What's up guys and welcome back to the John and Q channel. Thanks so much for watching. In today's video, we're talking about some EDP, emotionally disturbed people. And that's what happened here in Florida on a Saturday morning back in 2021. So we have this deputy, he goes to the gas station and fills up with fuel and he hears this other guy potentially wanting to harm himself. And as police officers, kind of can't let that go. You have to try to intervene and help that person and make sure that they don't actually want to harm themselves or if they're just saying that. And unfortunately, it turns out to be deadly for the person making these threats. Don't reach for anything. Do not reach for anything. Do not. Do not. Okay, so all, all of a sudden there, you know, the deputies are saying, hey, don't reach for anything. And of course, the guy goes and grabs a gun. And we know that because deputies are saying gun, gun, and they bring out their guns and draw on the guy, which, yeah, like that's what you should do. Do not. Put your hands up. Bash the window. I, I don't understand. I kind of don't like that the other deputy that was to the right of our deputy here, when he said gun, he kind of, he left him all alone. It kind of just doesn't seem like he was ready for a potential gun to be shown. And I, I'm not a big fan of that. Windows up. Hey, put the window down. I mean, put you can see the other down. deputy is going around the trunk, which, okay, if, if we're going to go into like a tactical get cover, I would understand because you have to see the other side of the vehicle and the person. So maybe that's what he was thinking. I don't really know. But it kind of seemed like he was scared to begin with and found the excuse to, to try to get the other cover. Put that gun down now. Put the you can see the deputy there. He tapped his body cam. He double tapped it to activate it, which what we saw in the beginning was the first 30 seconds, I'm assuming, of what happened. Gun down. I do not want to do this. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. I do not want to do this, sir. Please do not do this. Please do not do this. Put the gun down. Put now, I, I don't really know if that's a tactic in trying to get the other person with a gun to put it down or not harm himself or others, but saying, I don't want to do this. I We were never taught in the academy to say those things to further de-escalate the situation. Now, I don't know if that's something that they learned or, you know, I'm sure he didn't want to shoot him. Like nobody wants to shoot someone else on the job, but saying those things, are they effective? I don't really know. Comment down below. Put the gun down. Do not, do not, sir, please do not do this. Do not do this. Listen to me. Yes, you do. I'm looking at it. Lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. Lift, put your hand on the steering wheel now. Put your hand on the steering wheel. Now, this is good because he's identifying where the gun is and what he's holding, which is a gun. And he's giving the guy, the suspect, verbal commands to do what he's supposed to do. He's saying, put the gun down, put your hands on the steering wheel. He's trying to take control of the entire situation and trying to honestly, what I believe is de-escalate everything. Because at the end of the day, he does not want to shoot this guy who, you know, was saying he wants to harm himself. And this is potentially a, you know suicide by cop and that's not something we want to do now put the hand on the steering wheel do not touch that i see it it's got a brown handle do not do it do not do it i don't want to shoot you sir it's the last thing but i don't know who's strobing the heck out of that guy but i feel like strobing someone when they have a gun would make me as a suspect want to shoot whoever's strobing me so i don't know if that's a tactic or if that was a good idea or kind of like a you know, a misfire of the actual <laughs> tab on the flashlight. I want to do. Don't do it. Please do not do it. No, do not do it. Please do not do this to me. I do not want to live. With that, that's pretty crazy to say, honestly, to someone who's got a gun. I don't want to live with this. Like, I get it. You know, nobody wants to shoot somebody on the job. But to say that, is that a de-escalation tactic? I don't really know. With this. Look at me. I don't want to live with this. No, I don't want to. Please do not. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're not going to die, bro. I don't want to. Please, James, do not lift it. James, don't do it. Please do not do it. Okay, it sounds like he says James. Sounds like he may have got a name or know him from before. Potentially got a name and saying, hey, James, I don't want to do this. Put it down. And then he's saying, sir, I believe the deputy is doing a good job at handling what's going on, but also verbally 
kind of processing out loud. You know, people in IA can understand what is going on specifically because all we see is a deputy's arms, hands, gun, and then the suspect. We don't see the suspect's hands or what he's trying to do or what he's doing with the gun. And so him verbally telling us out loud what's going on, like a play-by-play, -play, is honestly a pretty good tactic. Do this, sir. Sir, don't do it. You want to drive? Is that what you want to do? Do not do that. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, don't do it. Don't do it, James. James, please. James, listen to me, Bobby. Move over if he drives because I got to stay on him. Don't do it. Somebody pepper spray me. So he said someone pepper spray. I, again, I don't know if that's a tactic, but I just, it, it looks like if you, if you were to pepper spray that guy, he probably would have gotten mad. Maybe drop the gun. Maybe turn around and start firing at you. Either way, you have an outcome of you get shot or he drops the gun. And it's kind of a gamble. Like, I don't really know. Maybe he knows James from prior experience or prior call where he would comply to, a, you know, pepper spray to the face. So you just, we really don't know. But I just don't know. If that's a complete tactic, if uh, you're a current law enforcement, comment down below. Is that something you would do? Do not do it. Don't do it. Please, please listen to me. Do not do it. Do not do it. No, you're not. You are not. Somebody come pepper. So during this interaction as well, we see the suspect uh, is also tr is is talking back and forth with the deputy, which is a good sign of, hey, potentially the deputy might get through to him and he might drop the gun and he might come out of this alive. And the fact that he's conversating, you know, kind of saying what he might do or wants to do is a good thing. But then he was like, hey, we got to pepper spray this guy because, you know, the escalation ladder, right? We already have potential lethal force, but we don't want to go straight to lethal force. We want to introduce the, I guess you would call the baby steps leading up to lethal force and want to make sure we cover all of our bases. So pepper spray may be a good thing. Spray inside. Hey. Do not do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Listen to me. Do not do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do not lift your hand. Oh, looks like he got a pretty good hit to the face with the pepper spray. The sheriff that walked up, I believe, is the sheriff that first got away when he, <laughs> they said gun. And then the suspect, of course, gets pepper sprayed, and his reaction is to, okay, I'm done. I'm leaving. And let's see what happens next. Watch his hand. Watch his hand. Watch his hand. Somebody watch his hand. Batons aren't made to break glass, especially car door glass. This is a very good depiction of how hard it is to actually use a baton to break car door glass. And he's also saying to the other deputy, hey, watch his hands. I'm going to try to get to him. And we can see that he goes in the back, tries to unlock it, unsuccessful, breaks out the baton and starts trying to break the car window. He's saying to the other deputy, hey, watch his hands because while I'm doing this, I could potentially get shot. Good on them for the communication and hopefully the other deputy has, you know, his gun drawn on the suspect. Somebody watch his hands. Somebody else get over here too. I'm watching the hands. Hands still up. I still got hands. Oh, wait. So this is the other deputy's body cam. He just told the other deputy, I believe, potentially that guy, to watch his hands. But he's also trying to break the car window open with a baton. But he's like, still got his hands. Still see his hands. I was told to watch his hands. If anything were to happen, I mean, it's. I feel like it'd be my fault for not watching his hands if I, the other deputy got shot. You know, my job is to not break that car window open. He told me, watch his hands. My gun is drawn on the suspect at all times as he's trying to break that window open. So I don't really know about this one. Six 
Shots fired. Hands up! Let me see your hands! Hands up! Hands up! Sir. See, okay, so that's what I'm talking about. And, and like it just happens that quick the suspect i think it i believe he reached for the gun deputy that was told to watch hit the suspect's hands reacts so quickly but also like yeah, a little late there because he wasn't already drawn on the suspect he was too busy breaking that window with his baton and he finally realizes oh crap like this guy might honestly shoot us and then we see this. Unfortunately, that's what can happen when police encounter someone who is EDP, and it really just depends on how it all plays out. Could it have been avoided? I don't really know. Could the deputy who was told to watch his hands be a little bit quicker? Maybe that's kind of how it played out. And that's really what police work is, what I found out in my short time as a police officer. Like every call is different, and no matter what the call is, you have to adapt and overcome an entire call. I hope you guys liked this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you want me to react to anything else, please comment down below, send me an email, and I will catch you in the next Johnny Q video. Peace.